Hey guys, it's Dawson Walker here, and uh, today we're going to be diving into some sources I help, that helped me throughout the book of Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. So first, I got a little introduction. Um, Tolkien is one of the best fantasy writers and creators to ever do it. Um, in Return of the King, we are constantly reminded about the power buried within uh, certain characters, and especially when they get close to the ring or come in counter with the ring. Um, he also relates it to like the war and his experiences and then basically how all this just contributes to the Middle Earth that Tolkien creates throughout his text. So my first um, source was Master of His Universe by Rowan Williams in 2018. So this source was pretty cool to me because it kind of told you who Tolkien was before he was this famous author and it kind of showed you why he's the famous author um so it started off by saying uh before he's an author he's a visual artist so at a young age he was very like interested in sketching and watercolor so i feel like well not, i don't feel like the source actually said he took his artsy side to paint a visual image in people's heads um he the ethical climate of the story is constantly complicated and no parts throughout this plot are vague um, he masters what he's good at and plants it in other pieces of his work. So the artsy thing, like people just think of like drawing and stuff, but it's really like he's painting an image in your head without a pencil, basically. His words are very, very uh, detailed and it helps paint an image in your head, especially reading the book. I mean, obviously, if you're watching the movie, you can just see for your own uh, by watching it. But really reading the book, he does a really good job of uh, painting this image in your head of what's really going on. So my second source was The Great War in Tolkien's Memory by Croft. Um, Tolkien was served in World War I, which is a huge deal globally and still affects many people to this day. Um, many works of literature were worked out during this time. However, Tolkien's work stuck around. And this is actually like impressive because most work around then, like you don't really hear about it as much as his. And the source said um, he lowered his gaze, his gaze uh, sufficiently to take in popular tradition. Tolkien's stories will always be able to speak directly to a wide audience unfamiliar with his times and um, have a greater significance for those who can relate to the Great War. The source also mentions how no matter how hard some authors try to keep their personal life out of the text, it usually finds its way in because it's just who they are as a person and it's hard to like keep that out sometimes. Especially when you got a story like Tolkien's writing and you can actually implement some things, it's pretty cool. Because he might not be the only one that can relate. Um, my next source was Realism and Fantasy by Lawrence Von Krikorian. I don't know if I got that right. Um, Tolkien does a great job of tying our world into the Middle Earth described in Lord of the Rings. This source shows the amount of time and detail you put in to creating this Middle Earth. The way Tolkien goes into detail about the nature paints a true image for the reader. Tolkien paid... Um, a lot of detail to the lie of the land, the flora, the fauna, the climate, which reflects his perfectionism and his concern for accuracy. And this is throughout the whole text. Anything you see Lord of the Rings, everything is 100% accurate. I mean, down to their outfits, the climate, everything. Um, some other things Tolkien implemented into his work are the use of names and language to help it keep like the real vibe of the Middle Earth, visual imagination, maps, and the weather. The novel relates to the end of the Third Age of Middle Earth, which is also the end of the magic of wizards and the elves and their forest culture. And the new age belongs to men and the hobbits, um, who must create culture landscapes based on the right kind of equilibrium between the needs of natural world and the needs of humans. Or rather, there must be a recognition of the ways in which humans are a part of the natural world. So he does a great job of tying like the world they're in to the needs of the people that are not magical in, this, in a way, more human. Which is why he goes into great detail about the setting of the book. My next source was One Metaphor to Rue the Mall by Karen Sullivan in 2013. Uh, so as I mentioned before, powers resembled very much so in the book. Um, and I described it as a, like a shadow or burden. Um, so when people come in contact with the ring, if they haven't 
overcame their burden, then the ring is going to possess them to do evil. Um, the scholarly article I found helps my helps me aid with the overall depiction of the ring and the role the characters play in it. This article suggests that the one ring and the power and the other powers um, are used as objects repeatedly test the metal and the mortality, the morality of characters throughout Lord of the Rings. So it's basically like a always a test, like a burden test. Is your ego or your super ego going to be able to overcome that burden? And if not, you know what happens. Like Gollum, um, people just get, they let the ring overcome them or it's overbearing in a way. So for an activity I got for you guys, um, I want you to, uh, so there's three options. You can pick one. Um, first option is describe an event in Lord in Return of the King where Middle Earth relates to the world we live in. And how did Tolkien do a good job of tying these two together? Or how did Tolkien implement the use of his war days to Lord of the Rings, Return of the King? Um, pick a specific event of how it relates to the war and try to like not pick like just the battle itself. Um, lastly, this is your last option. Um, name one person that has used their power for good and one that has used it for evil. Do their burdens have anything to do with it? Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, that's it. Thank you.